good evening yeah. so this was something uh, that uh, both the dalits uh, have been having some discussions uh, lately in the sense about 2 to 3 days ago about leadership and how uh, leadership and management and how we need to uh, be aligned uh, with the examples that god has given uh, due to a issue that came up in my office so then again in the morning he called me and said why not you share some of the learnings and uh, some, some some things that you have i have gone through so that uh, it could be uh, some sort of a points for discussion at this bible study and also that uh, brother lalit could impart to me as to others some knowledge on how god looks at leadership and management and how we need to uh, grow in this area so uh, this process of leadership and management has been a pet subject in me where i have done some research done my studies also on that area uh, uh, so i just jot down some uh, things that i have learned uh, it is a subject that still it's been researched there is no particular way or correct way of doing things because every time things evolve and uh, uh, ways of doing things are changing so there is no particular correct way that you can say this type of management or this type of leadership that needs to be there in this because situations arise situations uh, changes so uh, even though leadership is important it has passed very difficult uh, small difficulty in reading one <laughs> my own handwriting <laughs> it has proved very difficult to identify the elements of effective leadership so i just want to uh, what is effective leadership and how it can bring about a significant different in an organization so they say the process of leadership is interconnected with power influence and authority so these three are the things that uh, leadership works with and they say leadership and management are two different things leadership there is a natural past uh, to it that means inborn leadership qualities are there that means technical you can be a technical expert you can be a charismatic person things like that but in management it is that that you make sure that everything works well uh, ensuring that things remain as they are and that is done on a standard practices things like that so these are the two differences that you have in leadership and management uh, so many managers lack the essential qualities of a leader Uh, since they are concerned with achieving objectives in a bounded uh, and a time framework mechanism so in management when we learn management and leadership there are three uh, theories that we learn in management that is this personality trait style theories and contingency theories so, yes okay yes so personality trait includes uh, a leader should be integrity self awareness then empathy motivational things like that on management styles there is no best style as such that you can say because it as i told earlier it could depend on the circumstances so the place i work uh, management styles yeah so there could be different situations that come in in each one's lives in each management in each organization in each even a family situation it could be calm to crisis simple to complex severe threat to security uh, and will affect the successful you need a different style the task calm to crisis simple to complex severe threat to security where you need uh, all of a sudden a different style of management uh, then technological structures environment 
will all these all these areas will affect the the style of management then also the situation within the group that you manage it could be cooperative a group or a militant group there could be different types so that also would uh, throw you into a different different management style ha <laughs> <laughs> i think <laughs> <laughs> sometimes cooperative sometimes militant <laughs> so the people also within the group also will vary their intelligence their education their interests their motives uh, sometimes loyalty long serving aggrieved people are there in in your team then trouble makers are there so this all will throw you into different different styles of managing <laughs> if you don't ask questions i will repeat <laughs> within the group intelligent education then interest and motives different interests and motives are there within the group loyal long serving aggrieved casual or trouble makers are there yeah so then there was this study that was done by kurt levin on management styles he said there are three types democratic where you get a participatory style you get you take decisions on a participatory basis you ask questions you get feedback then you take decisions then there is another one the lesser sphere where leader does not do anything he allows the people to grow he just watches then you get the authoritative type the leaders tell what needs to be done there is no consultative thing so then again this was again uh, more researched by one person called rensis he said explosive authoritative where you bring a fear threat factor into the group and then you you manage that group then you get another type where you get the benevolent authoritative where you management you manage the group but you only hears what you want to hear so that type of uh, leaders are there then you get the consultative group where you reward you give uh, uh, occasional punishments also a consultative more or less a participatory type then the other one is the participative where you utilize the group participation you get the group to participate come up with ideas things like that why do you spend most of the time on the talking <laughs> 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 so i will yes i think that also depends on the style of uh, way things are so i'll just uh, give you some ideas how uh, from the bible the leadership styles that i have learned uh, so then again as i told you there is this uh, three types that on leader uh, leadership where the final one was the contingency theory this was studied by john adair where he, he said effective leadership requires bringing together task team and individuals task of course is generally in, a, in a, when you lead you need to task is of course there you need there's a task that you need to perform then a team effective team generates synergies so out different skills and knowledge comes out of the team so he said you have to bring in that then again individual is that you need to give them some space to breathe where their individual needs and wants are also met so effective leader is able to manage all these uh, types and also style varies according to the level of maturity of the followers and the demand for the situation so let me just take through some of the styles that i have followed and uh, how it has uh, where i have failed where i have gone through but before that i'll just explain uh, some leadership styles that i actually admire from the bible Uh, especially of course we can i'll tell you about how jesus christ the leadership qualities that he expressed he is the ultimate leader that we would 
admire or we would try to achieve then you have the most leadership uh, type that i admired in the bible was moses but before coming to moses i'll just tell about peter now peter was a leader he was a born leader in the sense andrew when he found jesus he went and told jesus, uh, peter so he looked up to andrew looked up to peter for some sort of uh, yeah then again uh, you see jesus christ also telling peter when he at the last supper he said to peter go and find the room and find the donkey and said if need arises you tell the master wants the donkey so uh, jesus also knew some sort of trait in peter saying okay this guy will know how to handle it or he he had that trait in him then we see paul a very authoritarian type of character uh, of course he would have all the other qualities but then one example is when <clears throat> he and barnabas uh, they had a split where barnabas was more participatory more of a relaxed person he saw some weaknesses in uh, maybe mark is it or the john mark he wanted and he was taking that side but uh, this guy who paul said no i need to and they separated they went their ways uh, so paul we see in that he he was a more of a authority type leader in that uh, the character that i like is moses most because uh, moses uh, when you read moses the uh, leadership style he you see him as a shy and a uh, person who didn't know how to speak uh, after 40 years of training and all that maybe at at uh, pharaoh's court and pharaoh's house uh, palace he went over to uh, midian and he when he was at the burning bush he said i am shy character i am i am i don't know how to speak so that part and how he turned to be a, a great leader who brought out uh, people of israel out of the pharaoh's hand so in instances we see where he uses authority how he changed when he performed the not that he performed when he was used to perform get the uh, the what is this plagues uh, the authority that he had and also when we, we see that when during the journey towards the uh, israel that he was he was all the people were coming him, him because he was acting as a judge and there was a time that his father in law came and gave him advice saying look here you need to listen to you need to appoint leaders and you need to ask them to first counsel and then thereafter only you need to otherwise he was getting dragged down because he was not uh, so we see those types of leaders leader leadership qualities in moses yeah okay yes we move with the study yes Words. Yes. Have you got any hand out? Uh, you hand out. short notice for so there was a situation in this person's office he was head of a department and he had a marketing director or manager marketing director or manager marketing manager marketing manager over him and uh, he had a coo over him and he had a ceo over him so ceo was also a banker and this person is was also a banker so they were uh, starting a uh, certain venture and uh, 
marketing uh, chap kept saying, good, good, you are doing good. You have brought good business. We didn't expect to grow during this time because it's COVID time, but you, you have grown well. Then uh, CEO was uh, a peaceable chap. He was more pastoral kind and he managed things for safety. The COO uh, wanted to have a voice in this. And he said, though you, are, you have, though you are grown, look here, you must listen to us. We are, we are your seniors and you are growing without enough security in what you do. Uh, so we have to have a discussion now. Remember the three characters, this, this head who has grown the thing with a team. And now he is trying to uh, present that his growth model was good because it produced good results in a difficult time. Uh, the marketing chap says, yes, yes, you are doing very well. Uh, but CEO uh, puts a kuttu. He says, look, you are doing it on your own style. Uh, I want to tell you that you need to have more security and you need to listen to your seniors. CEO. So in the front of CEO, uh, in the front of CEO, COO making his voice heard. Uh, CEO, CEO is quiet. Uh, so how can this person who is head of a department done well and grown in a difficult time? Uh, he feels if he does the C, what CEO is saying, he will lose the clientele. So how can we bring this to a solution according to what we are going to now have a look at? Will you show me the chair? Now we have read Ephesians 4. So to complete Ephesians 4 story, we have three more case studies coming. Krishi, you are next, huh? Ephesians uh, before we read, to complete that list, I want to read 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And God has appointed in the church, are there? First, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administration, administrations, various kinds of tongues. So you will see that Miracles, gifts of healings are actually operations, so are tongues. But apostles, prophets, teachers, administration, helps are officers. Did I make myself clear? In 1 Corinthians 12, it's a mix of operations plus persons. Some of those persons and officers be read in Ephesians 4 also. Now, uh, should I read? Should I read Romans? We'll read Romans also because our next case studies will begin to draw from this structure. Romans 12. Romans 12. Verse 5, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. So that Milanga's principle, he said in a, you have a task, a team and individuals also must have space. Then, Krishi, you have to tell us, are you going to, uh, not now, I mean, th uh, uh, is it a situation that had to be from uh, calm to crisis, simple to complex, threat to security? Three situations you said have to be managed, isn't it? Hmm? So we can learn as we go along. Maybe we should have a full day of a thing like this where everybody has a, case presentation and we try to fit it to 
what the Bible already has. Uh, so we are, today we have only limited time. Romans 12, verse so we, we who are many, one body, individually members of one another, six, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace. So grace is to find common ground in the difference. Let's say together grace is to fi find commonality in different offices. Gifts are different but uh, synergy comes in the commonality. Uh, so we don't want to be different for the sake of being different. We Difference comes because God designed us like that. So do, do you recognize that in, in team anywhere, some people want to be different for the sake of being different. But actually God has made us, designed us differently with, what do you think, 60% common ground, 40% varying. How have you thought about life? How have you thought about the gift? Commonness is more or difference is more percentage wise? Do you understand what I am asking? Now we have understood grace and everybody has been given. It's a gift but all this comes under the call. If people don't understand the call of God, they'll fight for the gift. Commonness comes from the call that is common on our life. So when we are part of this genome in the church, there's a common call, but there's different giftings. So what do you think in your understanding? Uh, do, you, do you say 50% is common? And 50% is different? Is that a fair? Or do we get someone who is only 10% like the common and 90% is different? What do you say? How to solve a problem like Maria? Ashwini, how was man singing? Did it come anywhere near the original? Yeah. Uh, so think of these things as we move along. Romans 12, 6. Since we have gifts that differ, that's granted, according to the grace. So grace is there in the difference given to us. Each of us is to exercise them, that's the operation, accordingly. If prophecy according to the proportion of faith. So the this kind of gift is, I told you what's the Greek? Charisma. I'm suggesting to you, this is what we are born with. So I call them fatherhood character ability. Will you practice that term? Fatherhood character ability. So in your handout, there's a table given. In that you get a, uh, I don't know whether we can go through all this, fatherhood character gifts. I'm suggesting we get into a job description and function according to the fatherhood character ability. That's our seat. Uh, this is, uh, these are there, these are there. In my slide presentation, be at the slide presentation. That's the seat. Can you see the seat? Thank you, Asajani. Did you see that nice diagram? Where do you get the officers? At the back. Where do you get the fatherhood character ability? You're seated with it. Which came first? Hello, which came first? Seated ones came first because we were born with it. So we will not be called otherwise. Who gave us the God scope when we were being born? 
birth who god who gives us the doria god who gives us the charisma god and who is walking now who is walking now in the graphic the church so the church is doing the walking so the seat is how god created us that's what goes into the back of the seat which is the office can you follow my allegory and we are now going to find out through case studies how the same things work in professions as well as in church because god created the world god created work god created resources god created callings giftings and of course god created the church so there can't be a contradiction but a complementation here yeah. so it's a good thing to find the complementation rather than the con 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 rather than the uh, rather than the difference but appreciating that there's a difference so really uh, i'm still on J J romans 12 so prophecy according to the proportion of faith so what is the safeguard for prophecy uh, th there must be a proportion so faith must have a proportion now we have a four story building thank god so that we can freely meet comfortably meet now your apostle gets up one day and he comes on sunday and says god gave me a vision that we must have a 20 story building so since we are very consensus oriented as uh, melanga pointed out <laughs> what will everybody say everybody will say brother lalit i mean let's go for two more maybe but 20 16 more stories i don't think it's the proportion the proportion is right you get you get prophecy foresees forges ahead the prophecy seals hears feels before others will you write it down prophecy sees feels hears before others so when you see feel hear before others what must you do what does 1 corinthians 14 say i repeat when you see when you hear so in the hebrew prophet uh, prophet is called roe seer is w e r seer because see the hebrew culture the word was called dawa illuminated word light shining on the word what does dawa means light shining on the word what's the written word in hebrew memre written word is memre seen word is dawa hebrew understanding was you see so what did ezekiel do he saw the burden of the lord and it was called an oracle the hebrew written word is what he i mean a greek written word is what what logos and in uh, uh, in the greek in the new testament what do you do with the word you you speak the word and you hear the word so what is the heard word call reveal word is call rhema so if we put this in a table i often thought that spit can erase everything but this but this ink didn't erase so this is how you do it please draw it in your thing old testament written word is called memre illuminated word is called daba in the new testament written word is called logos and the revealed word is called rayma rayma has to do with 
hearing. Dava has to do with seeing. So that's about. So when the prophecy people, highest of it being prophet, prophetic people, gift of prophecy, people see before others, hear before others, and feel before others, what must they do? They must run ahead and do before others. Correct? No, wrong. What must they do? They bring it for others to judge. Who says that? 1 Corinthians 14, Paul the Apostle says, bring it for others to judge. Then they will say, this amount is good, but that amount is for another time. That's the idea of so prophecy. Uh, so can you see the seat? It has prophecy. In the back of the seat, who is at the bottom? Apostle. Why should, we, why should he be at the bottom? Shouldn't he be on top with a corona crown like the COVID? Don't you think apostles should be on the top? We have 1 Corinthians 12, 28 said apostles first, but it did not say apostles top. He bears all the burden and he is the foundation. He carries the weight. Most of the time he will not even be seen. He has got buried into the foundation, isn't it? So when the foundation is strong and others appreciate it, you don't have to talk about it. It's a foundation. In this building, do we see the foundation? We see the operation. But don't forget there's a foundation. So that's why he's at the bottom. So who's at the top? Evangelist, administration, deacon. I should have put evangelist at the top because he takes it to the outside and he brings them to the inside. So each of us will have a measure. But after the case studies, I'll go to that. Each of us will have a measure. There will be a measure of the apostolic when you have to start up a business. Measure of the apostolic. So anyone will have a measure of the property. Did judge, was judge a bad prophetic? Did she say, thus is the Lord, thus is the Lord? What was she prophetic about? She saw this son was born for greatness. She said, with my life, I'll protect. What if she said, can't help, it's too much risk? No, she saw. How did she see? God seeing and a national liberator. Father of a nation was protected, isn't it? So you see. Uh, so you can do a lot on prophecy. It's it's a, uh, but I want to finish the list. Uh, uh, finish the list uh, very quickly. Get on to the cases. If service in his serving, so that Greek word is diakonia. Service diakonia. What do you think? From that comes deacon. Prophecy. By proportion. Uh, what do you most expect in a service person? The usher. One who is ushering. What do you expect from an usher? One who is serving the communion. Carrying the, uh, the, the, the offering bag. What do you expect? Helpful. Diakonia is about, you remember 1 Corinthians 12, 28? Office call helps. Office call helps. And office call, apostle. So apostle, first. What about helps? It did not say helps last. It did not say helps last. Apostles first, second, prophets, third, teachers, and the categorization stops there. I'll explain to you why teachers were put before pastors. It's a, it's a theological distinction. Uh, because pastors are always local. Pastors look after one congregation in one place. Whereas teachers can go to a couple of places and 
teach the teaching. You can't pastor the pastoring in many places. Got, got it? Pastor is local. He cares for a local flock. He knows all about them. He protects them. He feeds them. He nurtures them. It's very time consuming. So he, he, you, you can't say pastor and I'm, I'm itinerant. It's rubbish. It's oxymoron. Pastor is a one place person looking after a flock. How many can he look after? By general oversight? Just 100. Just 100. Of course that 100 would be in 10 different cells with a pastoral care leader in the cell. You understand? Yeah. Uh, so I'm dragging this. We must get to cases. As we go on, we'll look at the others. Krishi, come and now present your case. Shalom, you're coming. You can do it alone. He won't feel lonely. So, um, check. So, uh, mostly I have a, a few cases, uh, maybe just to cover. Uh, the officers that uh, still there, but as individuals and also uh, as uh, a group in the young adult ministry. So, um, in in the young adult ministry, uh, lately I think we've uh, seen a huge surge of numbers. So that is clearly because of uh, the evangelical approach of uh, some, at least there. So. Uh, for example, uh, of some, huh? of some. <laughs> of some. <laughs> uh, so, for example, uh, so la, usually uh, um, uh, the young adult group now that we have uh, started about four and a half years back as a youth group, uh, and uh, we've gone through, I think. Uh, quite a few rough patches. Uh, sometimes it would have uh, been probably uh, four or five people uh, meeting and pressing through. So we started on Sundays uh, bi-weekly and then we moved on to Sundays weekly and then we moved on to Fridays. Uh, and so that's what happened last over the four years. But uh, lately we've uh, seen the numbers uh, increase uh, so much that uh, actually the health protocol is also uh, <laughs> really a bit of hard to follow because uh, for example yesterday we had 25 a meeting at uh, <laughs> Dinesh's place so um, the main catalyst I would say for evangelists uh, uh, in our group would uh, I will have to put it down if, it ha if I had to put it down to one person it would be uh, Chamath because I think uh, uh, Chamat uh, started by uh, inviting a friend who felt really comfortable, who invited another friend. And then I think that kind of uh, broke the group of this measure being there. I think it was there in everyone, but I think to see it there kind of helped everyone to, why not we also invite? Why not we also invite? So it's, it's, it's touching, um, I think, easily uh, 20 plus numbers uh, every week now. And uh, so that is uh, something that uh, that office that we've experienced in our midst. Uh, in a sense of uh, a pastoral teacher, I would say, I think uh, as a core group, uh, I think uh, all six of us, that is uh, Aritra Dinali, Shiloma Rayu, Shalom and myself, we would have uh, a 50-50 a or sometimes uh, you know, more of uh, one side or the other. For, but for personally, uh, personally, I would uh, 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 also be, for someone who doesn't know me, I would be more of a, a pastor, but someone who knows me, I think I can be a bit tough on them. So it can be a bit of a teacher. So if you know me uh, for a bit of time, and if I kind of uh, get to know, uh, someone personally and if I kind of see the potential on someone I tend to push them to kind of achieve which might be a bit hard but uh, <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> so if you are uh, not being pushed, maybe I haven't gotten closer to you as yet. So, um, <laughs> so that is uh, the pastor and teacher. And I think mostly uh, all six of us, as I said, would have some sort of measure. And I'm sure that there are, uh, even in the group that we see others, uh, uh, you know, uh, growing forth in those giftings. In terms of uh, prophecy, word of knowledge, uh, case study or an example that comes to mind is uh, the Alpha Weekend that we had in uh, 2018 at uh, a place in Kalania, where mostly it was the uh, young, I think around uh, 18 to 20 year olds. Uh, it was a Holy Spirit weekend, so it was just, we also didn't know what, uh, we hadn't planned anything, so we were like, okay, let's just, uh, and uh, even the Alpha Manual actually doesn't have anything on that week because uh, there's nothing to limit the Holy Spirit to. It's just, you know, do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you. To. So we just uh, sang a few songs and then uh, the Holy Spirit came and uh, I could see uh, mainly, uh, I think, Shiloh and Shalom going and ministering to a few people there and uh, which really spoke to their hearts, I think, because you could feel them um, tearing and feeling the warmth of the Holy Spirit. So that's uh, one uh, gift that, uh, the prophecy gift that we've seen happening in the group. And personally for me, uh, the gift of prophecy, I would say was uh, experienced last year in the new next gen camp when uh, Pastor Tom and Auntie Sarah came with the team and uh, they do this uh, uh, prophecy training with uh, picture postcards so uh, it's uh, it's a uh, sense of uh, you sit the other way and then someone steps up to hear a prophecy from god essentially and uh, another person who's your helper picks three random cards from uh, the stack of pictures there and gives it to whoever is speaking out the prophecy and you can take your time you can rearrange the pictures in any order you want and then give the prophecy to that person. So I uh, uh, took the chance of uh, uh, sitting there and uh, it was Sumudu from the uh, singular congregation who stepped up and I still remember it was a, a motorbike, which is a racing bike and uh, the prophecy anyway. Uh, what, I, what I told from what I uh, heard from the Holy Spirit was, uh, Sumudu said that it was uh, something that strengthened him in his walk and it was in time. So that was something that I personally experienced in the gift of uh, prophecy. And uh, Apostle, uh, maybe like, I didn't put anything down, but just probably like what Uncle said, probably there's something that's embedded in all of us, but we don't see it because uh, it's uh, probably pristine, but that's probably the base that all of this has been built on. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, what should I say, to en enlarge on what Krishi said, shall we look at this table? Now, Krishi, Krishi described one aspect of prophecy, the gift of prophecy. Then there is a prophecy person. Then there is the office of prophet. Now, everyone who operates in a, in a gift of prophecy, which is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, is not in the office of prophet. Office of prophet is next to apostles first, second prophets. And Ephesians 2.22 says, the church is built on the cornerstone Jesus Christ, apostles and prophets, the foundation. So, which was laid and which has to be renewed by apostle and prophet working together. And in the New Testament, you see Paul the apostle and Apoll Apollos the prophet. Another thing I uh, could have mentioned at the beginning is apostle carries all four other gifts in him. If not, he can't lead them. So, apostle carries the office of prophet, office of pastor, teacher, evangelist. And he has to be the chief servant. So sometimes I'm asked why I carry chairs during a service time when people come, isn't it? 
It's a rather undignified thing for the senior pastor to do, isn't it? Have you ever gone to a church? Most of you have not, not gone to another church, but and don't try it also. But uh, have you heard of have you heard of a senior pastor carrying chairs? Uh, thinking this, I can't watch a lady carrying chairs. When new people come, I feel I have to get up and help her. Uh, besides that, I want to be involved. Then when a new person comes, I want to see whether I can quickly pass some booklet into that hand. So I have this mischievous behavior. Plus, uh, the Lord has put into my heart deeply that I am a cheap servant. So in a dinner time, I'll be serving and I'll be praying. So this is not some super grace. I, I think the senior has to, anywhere the senior should be like that. He's the chief servant and who, from whom do we get the example? From the Lord Jesus Christ. He bends low and does this really sticky fellow, you know, Peter never did properly. Did he not? No, he, he just, while going fishing, he gets wet. He doesn't think any extra bathing is necessary. So, anyway, uh, so uh, we have an example written into us, isn't it? We don't try to follow. Things get written into our spirit deep inside. Of course, then we follow. Look at the prophecy, which is the first one. Romans 12 takes up. Why do you think? Romans 12 takes up prophecy first. This is the prophecy of the nature that God gave you. Let's see how it unfolds. Are you with me with this table? Okay. Uh, there must be a way that you can put this on the... Sharon used to do it. She puts a whole word up on the Google sheet or something. She does see. Can you this man? You can follow the thing. Please take home. Don't throw it off. Put it inside your Bible and study it further. Uh, prophecy. Did you see that? Inspiration. According to proportion of faith. What's the second column? Spiritual office and their need. Prophet or gift of prophecy. Where else do you get prophecy operating? What does the script, what does the script say? You all have it. What, what have I particularly mentioned? Worship leader. Why? Worship leader when planning gets a sense after this hymn it should be this. Now of course some worship leaders or some pastors may get it while they are on their feet and they cause trouble to multimedia and the keyboardists and everybody else. Uh, everybody should be thinking at that time why could he get it earlier isn't it? You know the property is like that. It has a, it, it, it pops up. Yeah. But worship leader with the gift of prophecy operating and with the prophecy nature operating. The musicians hear music before they compose. All musicians hear music, what, what they hear, they compose. Where, they, where do they hear from? From prophecy. Unfortunately, many don't give credit to God. But thank God, some great composers were outstanding Christians. And you know how Messiah, the, uh, what do you call it, was born. Handel's Messiah, what do you call a thing like that? Messiah, uh, Handel's, uh, not a ballet, what do you call it? Uh, anyway, you, it was completely born. He was uh, bankrupt, always out of his earnings. He gave to children charities. He never saved money. And he got very depressed because they were going to take over all his house and everything else. And uh, then Christmas time was coming and he said, nobody just wants me, I'm going to prison. Debtors prison was a terrible thing at that time. And his uh, servant, friend came to see him and his servant said, Master has hardly eaten for 20 days. He's just inside his room. So the friend who came to see him was a uh, businessman who had often... Uh, sponsored his compositions. He said, can I see him? And then he said, I, he had not seen anybody. He hardly sees me. I only keep the food at the door and come and he just touches a bit of food, that's all. But since then he asked and the uh, panel said, let him come. Then he said, uh, what are you going to do for Christmas? Then Handel said, I was very desperate, but I am writing a kind of, uh, he called it something, what are those called? Uh, they call it, not ballet, they call it uh, 
So he said, I'm composing. It should be done in about a week's time. And what was the composition? Ballad Nemi. It's something else. Uh, uh, he said, uh, it's, I should be done in a week's time. And the week time came. And you know what Handel said? From this also, profits must go to the orphanages. Because in Handel's time, orphanages were hell holes. You know, children were suffering, and so he always kept giving for orphanages. So the, the, his friend said, "I will, I will, I will, I will do your wish. First one, everything will go to the orphanage. But after that, I am going to manage your finances. You can't be like this. Such a great composer. Is it okay? First profit, let it go to, and then." When Handel's Messiah came on stage, it was the best ever. Out of his grief, it was born. It filled auditorium after auditorium, till one day it was so famous, Queen herself came. And when Queen came and heard the rage, Queen stands up for nobody. She doesn't even stand up for Prince Philip. That be said. <laughs> she just automatically stood up. That's how the tradition came and that particular thing, there's a particular place, isn't it, in Handel's Messiah, everybody stands to their feet. He was saved from a dead prison and Handel's Messiah became. So where did that music come from? There's a prophecy of seeing what follows the next one, what follows the next one. So every worship leader, uh, composer, uses the gift of prophecy to see, hear, feel what others didn't see, hear or feel before they feel. What about artists? Anyone who's a real artist here? Oratorio. Oratorio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when you draw art, now, uh, uh, you know, our little Danica draws, and she captures colors. I don't know from where. They know this is the color it should be. Uh, so the shape it should be. Tilini, why are you silent? You are an artist, isn't it? The artists capture. And then what about uh, for real photographers? They see a dead tree besides a sinking lake and they take a shot. And they take a shot the way they saw it. You understand? So quite a lot of this kind of stuff. What about a graphic designer? When he has to capture, when Nana Lalindra captured the chili logo for that particular slim marketing thing. Chili became the some logo for marketing from that year onwards. When it was a competition. He captured it in the chili. Chili means the Sri Lankan chili. But where does that come from? So that's the prophecy. I can go on. I think I have put down some uh, purpose, edification in small groups, prayer life, main service. See, hear, feel before others. What are the cautions? Prophetic people can get presumptuous. God showed me a mission. Of a of a grand mall or a or a or a ten thousand seat auditorium. What is your congregation, Pastor? Hundred, but it's going to be ten thousand uh, uh, in how many years? Who knows? God can do it next year. And then the man sings. He uh, gets into debt uh, because he tried to build a big building. So what do prophecy people should be careful about? Proportion. Say proportion. Pro say proportion, proportion. proportion yeah. Uh, uh, caution, prophecy beyond jurisdiction. Yeah, can't explain it now. Secular application, meaning in the world, how does prophecy work? Investors, speculators, entrepreneurs. Now you are bringing that out. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, entrepreneurs, faith projections in business, researchers. How does prophecy come to researchers? Researchers get a hunch something is going wrong with children. This children's hyperactive behavior looks wrong. Children are 
uh, jittery. Children are restless. What's going wrong? That's how my research into digital thing began. You got a hunch. This has happened before this. Uh, so researchers get a hunch that others haven't got. Of course, this will involve brain and this searching the hunch up. It may be a god sense also, isn't it? Uh, you know, all the pioneering scientists of the 19th century were outstanding Christians. Louis Pasteur, Michael Faraday, Robert Boyle, Lord Kelvin, Sir Alexander Fleming who discovered penicillin, uh, Madame Kim, Marie Curie, they all went after a scientific hunch. God led them into it. So those are some applications of the prophecy part in, uh, in God's world of work. Shall we say God's world of work? Oh,